Hey guys, before we get started here, I just wanted to let you know that uh, right as I was uploading this video, the National Hurricane Center went ahead and, uh, you know, called uh, Tropical Storm Elsa a hurricane now. So it is officially a hurricane throughout this entire video. I am talking uh, about Elsa as if it's a, uh, a tropical storm. I'm like, I think it's going to be a hurricane. I think it's going to, well, turns out I was right. I just didn't think it would happen this soon. Uh, so now we have Hurricane Elsa out there and um, yeah, enjoy the video. I, all the data is still relevant. Okay. But uh, I, I I'm referring to it as uh, Tropical Storm Elsa. All right, here we go. In this video, we're talking about Tropical Storm Elsa as she ramps up in the Atlantic Ocean. The National Hurricane Center has issued Tropical Storm warnings for the Dominican Republic and Haiti with winds over 60 miles an hour expected. And some of the models are showing this storm continuing to strengthen into a possible hurricane as it approaches Florida. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Another day, another weather forecast discussion here at the official uh, YouTube slash TikTok weather forecasting studios here in Kentucky. That's right, I have a TikTok if you want to go follow that. We're almost to 220,000 followers over there. But if you don't do all the TikTok stuff, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube uh, because uh, things are getting really active out there with the tropics. And this is going to be the place you're going to want to be as we start getting deeper into that, okay? Now, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, we are still dealing with this cold front that we've been talking about for four days now. You see the cyclonic rotation of the low pressure system there, moving into upstate New York now, and then that cold front's trailing down from, uh, you know, just off the shore of Long Island, down through Richmond, Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, and then down into Atlanta, and all the way down into uh, northern parts of Louisiana, Dallas, Texas, and then back into Albuquerque. That is one big area of precipitation being driven forward uh, by a cold cold front. And we're actually feeling the cooler air back here in Chicago, Cincinnati, you know, the Kentucky, Ohio Valley region there. Uh, I know it's personally where I live, it's cooled off a lot. And that's thanks to this cold front here that brought the big storms yesterday uh, to the Washington DC area and Delaware. Now there's pretty much nothing else to talk about here, uh, you know, on the mainland as far as weather goes. It's going to be rainy in some spots, but really our severe weather uh, outbreaks are kind of put on pause for right now, uh, which is good news because we have something else a little bit more uh, impressive to talk about anyways. As you can see, our big red cone of uncertainty there is plotting the path of Tropical Storm Elsa as it marches towards Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and then eventually somewhere in the Gulf area of the United States. As of right now, it's looking like Florida. And we're pretty much going to spend the whole video today talking about this. So <laughs> let's get right into it. All right. So first off, we're going to look at some current and official data from the National Hurricane Center and some uh, satellite imagery. So this is what Tropical Storm Elsa looks like right now as I'm filming this video. You can see here, We've got deep convection out here in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the center of circulation, even though it's kind of wobbly and it's not really organized right now, does look like it's going to pass right over St. Lucia uh, sometime today, all right? And then once it gets up in here, okay, this is hot bath water, all right? The Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean out here, it's warm. And one of the things that you look for with an unimpeded track with a cyclone like this, it's moving towards the northwest at around 25 to 30 miles an hour, is, you know, what are the water temperatures looking like relative to uh, what they normally look like this year? And once again, once you get past past these islands up in here, uh, we're talking about bath water. We're talking about very warm uh, waters up here. So I do believe that there's going to be plenty of opportunity out here for uh, Hurricane Elsa to surprise us and rapidly intensify more than what the National Hurricane Center is uh, saying that she's going to. All right. It's not like it matters if the water was warm up here or not because the cold never bothered her anyway. <laughs> Okay, let's get serious here and let's look at the National Hurricane Center's latest update on Tropical Storm Elsa. As you can see right here, 5 a.m. Fridays, when that update came through, that shows, you know, pretty much where the storm is right now. And then you can see exactly where they think that this thing is going to go. Some things to point out here, all the blue areas are tropical storm warnings. So we do have tropical storm warnings in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And we've got tropical storm watches all the way out here in Jamaica already. And I do believe that that's going to upgrade to a tropical storm warning or maybe even even a hurricane warning as we go forward. Uh, another thing to look are these plots, okay? You can see they think it's gonna be here 2 p.m. Saturday, uh, 2 p.m. Sunday, it's gonna be making its way into the Cuba region, may make landfall in Cuba around 2 a.m. Monday, uh, but each marker has a little symbol here that says S. That means that the National Hurricane Center thinks that this thing is going to maintain its strength as a tropical storm all the way up into Florida. Now, that is possible, and that's kind of like a best case scenario situation. Uh, tropical storm, especially for this area down here, is just a, a, your average sun 
summer day. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I do believe that there still is a very good chance that this intensifies into a hurricane and a little bit of more of a serious situation because, uh, you know, th this is just a long time for a storm to track over open waters to not rapidly intensify. Right now, the winds are 60 miles an hour in this storm, and they're saying that by the time it gets all the way over here, unimpeded on its path, uh, the winds are still only going to be 60 miles an hour. It just depends on what happens to it after it gets right here, okay? If it goes on land across Cuba and up Florida, it's not going to be much of anything. But if it takes this path of least resistance and goes up the western uh, side of Florida or on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico, we are going to be talking about a hurricane. Tropical storm force wind probabilities are getting much higher out there. Uh, we're near 70 and 80 percent down there in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we're all the way up to 30 to 40 percent in southwestern portions of Florida. And look at this, all the way up into uh, South Carolina, we've got that 5 to 10 percent chance of tropical storm force winds. So, you know, as you can see, each day that we look at this, as long as the storm doesn't completely disappear, uh, these probabilities will uh, go to the north and west along with the storm. All right, let's do what we came here to do and look at this thing on some tropical models. All right, we're going to look at the HMON Internest with the composite reflectivity model. Uh, this is going to show us, once again, I always say this, but I know you guys know this, but this is what the radar could look like uh, if we had a radar out here to track this storm. Okay, this isn't exactly what's going to happen with the storm, uh, but it really allows us to see when and where uh, these uh, these uh, time periods where intensification are going to occur. Okay, uh, so here's what the storm looks like right now on radar. If you want to keep up with the date and time it's always going to be displayed right there let's fast track this thing uh, past the islands here once it gets into that bath water that i was talking about around 2 p.m today uh, you're going to see these feeder bands really start to increase okay all of this uh, energy is getting sucked into the center of the storm uh, we're starting to see an eye wall develop here on tropical storm elsa and then look at this i push it forward a little bit more and you know kind of similar to what the national hurricane center is thinking it's a little wobbly okay uh, usually in this period uh of this you know, in this part of the storm, in this area of the ocean, uh, given all the factors that it has available to it, you would expect for this eye wall to become a little bit more uh, circular, a little bit more well-defined than what this model is showing right now. So this is actually showing a much weaker system, a much less sinister uh, situation than what some of the models were showing yesterday, which is a good thing. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, 2 a.m. on Saturday, it's just south of Puerto Rico. We do have an eye wall here, but it's struggling. It's struggling getting its uh, strength together. You can see it kind of forms and then dissipates forms and dissipates uh, we do see it get pretty strong here as it approaches the southern areas of the Dominican Republic southern uh, portions of Haiti we've got Port-au-Prince up here starting to experience some rainfall uh, from tropical storm Elsa at this point now this is I do believe this is probably the strongest portion of the storm that we've seen so far here at 2 p.m. on Saturday maybe in that north uh, eastern quadrant of the storm right there we're seeing winds approaching 65 maybe 70 miles an hour now it's been over over open waters enough it's really starting to strengthen there's that eye wall that we're looking for it's getting pretty organized now uh, you can see the spiraling motion of all the precipitation around that center of circulation it's at this point 8 p.m saturday that you know according to this model maybe this is where i think we could be talking about this thing uh possibly becoming a hurricane all right i don't see any reason uh, for this thing to have winds under 74 miles an hour right here now I'm, obviously it's not going to be widespread you're not going to see hurricane force winds in haiti with this storm but right around the eye wall there in the northeast quadrant and the strongest part of the storm this is definitely going to have the ability to kick up some pretty strong winds okay and i'm sure we will see that as we go forward look at that 11 p.m saturday really strong really well defined kind of skirting its way in between all the islands it's like oh i gotta find the <laughs> the path of least resistance here uh, so i can maintain my strength and as you can see dang and you know that's a hurricane that's definitely a low-end hurricane right there at 8, 8, 8 a.m. on Sunday as it approaches Cuba. Now, here is where it gets interesting, okay? It's going to make landfall, according to this model, uh, in southern Cuba, and that's going to immediately, uh, you know, stop the momentum that this storm had as far as intensification goes. We've been talking about this for days. If it takes this path where it goes across land here, um, all of the momentum and strength that it was, you know, gathering back here is going to go, you know, uh, to the wayside. Uh, however, there's still a possibility that that center of circulation there uh, could go like this and skirt off to the bottom of Cuba and continue 
to intensify. And in that case, we're going to be talking about a much stronger storm. But this uh, scenario plays out pretty well uh, because, you know, even though this is going to be a pretty strong tropical storm for Cuba, it's nothing they can't handle. And it really just tears the storm apart uh, before it gets up here and makes landfall again in southern Florida as a very weak tropical storm or maybe even a tropical depression at this point. Now, that's just one model. We also we got to take a look at the GFS because it's been consistently showing a big storm. Is it still? Let's find out. All right, here's the GFS model. I have never seen a model be so consistent with the track of a uh, you know a tropical storm before. Uh, if this thing nails this storm, if it actually makes landfall somewhere up here uh, in western Florida, uh, the GFS is going to win an award <laughs> for nailing this storm, like literally 10, 12 days out. So uh, the, the path does still look very similar. There's our uh, tropical storm Elsa right there south of the Dominican Republic, moving into the Caribbean area. And as you can see, it starts to rapidly intensify. We're we're watching it take a very similar track uh, to the storm we just watched, you know, on the uh, the other model that we looked at. But it's a little bit further to the south, and that intensification happens a little bit earlier. Okay, according to this model, according to the GFS, Jamaica may actually take a direct hit from a very strong tropical storm, or maybe even a, a hurricane right there around you know 2 p.m. on Sunday, July 4th. Uh, so you know, Jamaica has got to watch out for that because it's going to approach in such a manner that if that low pressure system, if that center of circulation does hit on the uh, southern side of the northeast shore there, uh, we probably will have some uh, surge problems, some wave problems. Uh, you know, even a low end hurricane can cause uh, some pretty significant waves and uh, surge there, especially in that part of the world. So uh, we've got to watch that closely for Jamaica. Uh, remember though, the other model that we were just looking at showed this storm coming up into Cuba. So <laughs> It, you know, it, it's it's not that much of a difference if you look at it this way, but just the slightest track move movement either way uh, is going to make a very large difference. So uh, let's see what the rest of the GFS shows. And there you go. It's showing that it's going to stay off the coast of Cuba, continue to intensify. It's going to cross Cuba there at the thinnest portion of the landmass, and then it's going to go into the eastern portion of the Gulf of Mexico and rapidly intensify once again into uh, definitely a hurricane at this point. If the GFS GFS is right. We are talking about possibly a hurricane making landfall in western Florida somewhere around Cedar Key on July 7th around 8 a.m. Okay, now this is just one model run. Once again, I don't want to freak anybody out, uh, but that does, you know, that's what this is saying right now, and it's been stupid consistent. <laughs> it's just not letting go of this uh, track right here, okay? Okay, let's zoom in here and watch this thing come in on the 850 millibar heights. Look at that thing, man. Talk about well organized as it comes in. And actually, you know, this is a little bit further west and a little bit further uh, north in Florida where it's saying it's gonna make landfall. This is more towards the Fish Creek and Horseshoe Beach area, okay? It's still, you know, it's, it's somewhere in this little divot of Florida where landfall will likely occur, you know, if the GFS track is right. Once it makes landfall, uh, it will rapidly uh, decrease in strength. We're still going to have a pretty strong storm system move through uh, Georgia there all the way up into Savannah, Georgia. We might have to watch out for some severe weather and maybe some tornadic activity there uh, if this is the uh, the path that it takes because that is a very strong low-level jet uh, on the southeastern side of that low pressure system and you know what that means. That means tornado time, baby. So of course we got to look at those surface wind speeds right before landfall. We are still talking about according to the GFS model, uh, close to 100 mile an hour wind gusts there on the eastern side of the circulation and you know uh, right before for landfall, we're still talking about 80, 90 miles an hour. This is a category one, category two hurricane, uh, possibly moving into Florida, guys. Okay, so I know, I know you guys down there that live in Florida, you're, you're not too concerned about anything under a category three, and I don't blame you. All right, uh, you know this isn't going to be the end of the world. This isn't the storm of the century or anything. Uh, but I do, you know, want to emphasize that you know if you've been hit by a category two hurricane before and you've only been skirted by the outer bands, you don't really know what the category two hurricane actually can, you know, do. This part of Florida getting a direct hit uh, from this direction of a storm is actually pretty rare. Uh, so if you live over here, you know, near Cedar Key, Horseshoe Beach, Fish Creek, that northeastern quadrant of the storm actually goes over you and you get, you know, a couple hours of those 90 to 100 mile an hour winds coming through. It is going to be a lot more significant uh, than, you know, <laughs> most of the category two twos uh, that you've been through where the center of circulation, you know, passes 50 to 100 miles or more off to your north or south. Now, something we always have to talk about when it comes to tropical systems is 
the rain, and there is gonna be a lot of it with this system. In Florida, there are some areas that could see five, six, seven inches of rain, and we're gonna see a pretty large swath of heavy rain all the way up into uh, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and maybe even, you know, it's still really far out. It's hard to, you know, pinpoint exactly uh, where this is gonna track once it enters the United States, but maybe even Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic region and New England could be experiencing some really heavy rain. Check this out. According to this, we're talking about, <laughs> You know, uh, multiple inches of rain, five, six, seven inches of rain on Long Island, uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Cape Cod there. And that's all, most of that is coming from uh, our tropical system there. So that would be a really interesting situation that would definitely cause some flooding and, uh, the, you know, be a really stormy time for the Northeast there uh, for a tropical system in July, man. What are, what's going on with the weather, son? All right. That's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for being here. If you want a storm chaser mug, or a nice Doppler radar poster like, uh, you know, any of the weather stuff that I have. I still got that deal running on shop.helicity.co. Use code Ryan Hall, y'all, at checkout for 5% off your entire order. Go rack up on a bunch of stuff. Get you some Doppler radar shoes. You know you want them, all right? And uh, yeah, it helps the channel. So uh, thank you for being here. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.